All the time she had been talking to Kelsey, Madison had been giving her all her attention to her sister and hadn't noticed the changes in her surroundings. When she realized that the excitement in Kelsey's eyes was getting more intense, it was already too late for her to react. She could feel someone approaching from behind, but she didn't have time to run around and see who it was before she was stabbed in her arm by a needle. She only vaguely saw a man wearing a mask and noticed that there was a sinister look in his eyes. In a daze, Madison heard someone say, Remember to remind the Thompson family about what they promised. When she woke, it was so cold that her body shivered, and she couldn't even speak. It was as if most of her clothes had been removed. She felt very scared. What are they going to do? She thought. She wanted to get up, but found herself lying on a cold hospital bed in some kind of warehouse. When she tried to move, she found that her limbs had been tied to the bed. After moving her hands and feet slightly, she lifted her head and was shocked to see that she was wearing a hospital gown. From what she could see, there was no one around. The warehouse seemed very big and was divided into small areas. The areas were separated by white sheets. Some of the sheets had been pulled back, revealing several beds nearby. While Madison noticed the smell of blood in the air, the thing that most moved and scared her was a row of small boxes not far away from her. The boxes were open and had a thin layer of frost on them. One look at them told her that the place was like a freezer. The most terrifying thing was the words written on the boxes. Each of them had the name of a different organ on the front of it, such as the heart, liver, spleen, and lungs. The sight of them made her feel terrified. She remembered when she had accidentally saved Lynn in the hospital, and they had been chased by the people from the smuggling gang. The sound of gunfire seemed to be still ringing in her ears. This time, she felt more vulnerable because Ian wasn't with her. She pressed her lips tightly and tried her best not to cry out. She vaguely heard people talking outside the warehouse and could tell that one of the voices was Kelsey's. As she struggled to calm her emotions, Madison forced herself to close her eyes. She didn't want to let them know that she had woken up. As she lay there with her eyes closed, she tried to focus on what the people were saying. Why aren't you getting on with it? You want her heart and she's lying inside, strapped to the bed, Kelsey said. Her voice was followed by the sound of several people walking together. I didn't know that Madison's heart was so valuable, Kelsey continued. It's worth a million, and when the time comes, you will get 70%, so hurry up and do it. As she listened to Kelsey's voice, Madison could tell that she was walking to the side of her bed. Behind her, there were several other footsteps. Madison was so nervous that her breathing stopped, but she looked as though she was sleeping. Ah, look at her. She seems so peaceful, Kelsey said mockingly. She then called for the people behind her to start their work. You guys need to make a start and get rid of her child. When her body has recovered, you can take what you want. When Madison heard Kelsey talk about getting rid of her child, her heart started thumping. What exactly does she want to do? Is she going to abort my child and remove my organs? I knew that Kelsey wasn't a good person, but I never realized that she was that twisted, Madison thought. Feeling that the other people were gradually approaching her, Madison panicked but she was clear that she mustn't open her eyes. She then heard another voice. Miss Greenwald, aren't you afraid that your family will find out about this? The voice sounded slightly familiar to Madison, and she noticed that when the others heard it, they stepped back from the bed. Hades, one of the men said. Madison wanted to open her eyes when she heard the familiar voice. She knew who he was because he was the masked man who had kidnapped her and the boy, Damien, though he had later let them go. Madison fought off the temptation to look and didn't open her eyes, fearing that she would immediately be taken care of once they were aware that she was awake. She was still carrying a small life, so she couldn't be so impulsive. Kelsey looked nervous when she saw Hades. He stood quietly at the door and leaned against the doorframe. 
a silver mask covered his entire face, and even his eyes were partially concealed, making it impossible to identify him. He looked at his subordinates and said, I see you think that you have the time to earn extra money here. I told you before that it's okay for you to earn some extra income, but only when it doesn't affect your normal work. When the men heard him say that, they immediately walked out, and Hades and Kelsey were left looking at each other, while Madison continued to pretend to be unconscious. Miss Greenwald, I'm surprised that you're so bold that you dare to freely enter my place. Do you think it's okay to use my facilities without even asking? He asked in a menacing tone. He walked over and stood in front of her. Kelsey shivered as he looked down at her and said, You've seen my base and the people who know about me. You even know about some of our operating procedures. Do you think that I can let you leave here safely? His last sentence scared her so much that her face turned pale, and her body became so weak that she fell to the floor. Madison heard the sound of the fall echoing around the warehouse. Kelsey had fainted. Soon after hitting the floor, Kelsey came around and said, Please don't hurt me. I don't want to die. I only brought one person over and I don't know anything. When Ellie had asked her to take Madison to the warehouse, Kelsey had gladly accepted the task. She had thought it would be a very simple job and hadn't expected that she would be risking her life. I didn't mean to disrespect you. I was only following instructions. I don't know anything about your operation here, and I won't say anything to anyone, she promised. As she spoke, Kelsey was crawling away from Hades. He sneered and walked up to her. He then reached out his hand and pulled her up. He said softly, Kelsey, I don't like to see you crawling around like that. I'll let you leave here, but if you say anything about this place to anyone, I'll come looking for you. I'm always on the lookout for organ donors, and you seem quite healthy. As he spoke... The winter wind blew in through an open window and lifted one of the white sheets. Kelsey saw countless small boxes waiting to be filled. In the corner, there was a doctor performing surgery, and she saw a bleeding heart placed into a small box. Kelsey shivered and said, I won't say a word. I'll forget that I was ever here. As much as she hated Madison, she wasn't willing to risk her own life in an attempt to harm her. Get out of here. Hades yelled. She ran out of the warehouse without looking back. Once inside, she kept running and wished she had never met Ellie. The thought of ending up strapped to one of those beds was her worst nightmare, and the image of that freshly removed heart would stay with her for a long time. The warehouse once again returned to silence. However, it wasn't silent for Madison, because she could hear the booming of her own heart. She felt that it was so loud that Hades would hear it. She could tell that he had moved to the side of her bed, and she became even more nervous. A pair of cold hands touched her slightly protruding abdomen. Her body convulsed, and she opened her eyes, looking up at the man who was touching her. The design of his silver mask was very simple and elegant. However, for almost everyone who had encountered it, it had been the last thing that they had seen before their death. The mask seemed to be smiling, but it made people freeze. Hades laughed and asked, Why have you stopped pretending to be unconscious? I was quite impressed by your acting. Madison felt that the end of her world had arrived. She thought that if he knew that she had been pretending to be unconscious, he would know that she had seen the warehouse, and she was scared that he wouldn't let her leave. She felt the same way Kelsey had felt a few moments earlier.